Hello, everybody. So, uh, as Nico was saying, my name is Jean Lefranc. I'm involved uh, in several European uh, research infrastructure projects, um, and I'm particularly focusing on the usage of ontologies, not only in biomedical domain, but also in various domains, trying to help these, the, I would say, less mature models to actually integrate semantics in their uh, data pipelines and to actually also standardize the way we are working uh, with ontologies and metadata schemas and so on that we called semantic artifacts to actually encompass the wide range of uh, content that uh, uh, leverage semantics. Today, I'm gonna talk about um, the Fahrenheit project uh, very briefly um, that started last year uh, in which uh, we are interested also in mappings uh, and one of our objectives is to say these mappings needs to be in a machine actionable format so that we can start building tools that will help us work uh, with these mappings to actually well retrieve data faster based on the mappings and to content negotiate between different databases and different domains to foster cross-domain interoperability as well. So briefly about uh, Fair Impact, uh, it's what we call the coordination and support action. It's, we're not developing software in this kind of uh, project, just proof of concept if we need, but the work we're doing is try to coordinate with the different communities and discuss about standardization, not only wide domain, but actually looking in different domains what exists and try to see if it applies to different other domains so that uh, we can kind of converge into one common solution and avoid having domain silos in different standards. So the project started in June last year. It's a three-year project uh, with 28 partners from different 10 different member states, including the UK as well. And the objective is to expand fair solutions across Europe, but not only, and you will see at the end, also uh, see that that work is going to also be um, integrated and discussed with uh, people around the world. Very briefly, the objective is to support the implementation of fair enabling practices. I don't go on the fair principles. I, I believe that most of you have heard about it already quite several times, but the idea is to make data findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And there are 15 generic principles. And now the quick question, the question that uh, everybody has is how do we implement them? And so the idea is to look into the different practices in the communities that try to implement the FAIR and see if we can uh, converge and integrate them all together so there would be one way of implementing FAIR or we are making sure that the different ways are actually themselves interpretable. And so we look at the different aspects, of course, the technical aspects, but FAIR also integrates a lot of social aspects which requires agreement within communities and across communities. So we're looking at different aspects like policies, governance, uh, and also the um, tools and specifications. In that project, we have one work package, which is fully dedicated to metadata and ontologies. Again, um, here we're using the semantic artifact uh, concept, which is a sort of a bridge concept that we created in the previous project from which Fair Impact derives, Fair is Fair, fair, is fair uh, with the idea that we don't want to have this discussion whether a code list or a terminology or thesaurus is an ontology. So what we decided is to create that semantic artifact concept where the idea is that it covers the broad range of content that, um, that actually uh, has semantic in it, and that is in a machine readable or machine actionable format. Regarding the fair mappings, which is one of the tasks of that work package, we just had a workshop last week, uh, which was actually quite successful. We had 94 attendees from a broad range of uh, scientific communities. Um, and the idea was to kickstart the discussion uh, because the goal that we set up in, in this uh, project is to actually collaborate with all the communities and co-create a common model for making the mappings uh, fair. Um, and working with the existing models like uh, SESOM to actually see if we can, what is missing in SESOM to actually make them compliant to the FAIR principles and also um, well, work with uh, the SESOM development team uh, to actually um, see what is missing 
for special cases of mapping, which is the topic of today, right? So now it's tackling uh, simple mappings. How can we deal with more complex mappings? And that meeting was jointly organized actually with the system development. Fair Impact, as I said, works with communities. So we have a way to interact with people uh, and other communities. Uh, we have open calls. I'm not going to talk about it uh, deeply, just mentioning it. So if you're interested, you can look at the website and check. We do have a model that allows to actually have small projects uh, with a little bit of funding uh, on specific topics with communities. So you can apply to these, pro to these uh, calls then your project may be selected and there might be some either some money to support you, a small amount, right? Uh, or uh, we, you will have the support of the internal uh, experts within the projects. And right now there are two different calls that are open, one on fairness assessment challenge and another one on enabling fair posting and our crate for content, uh, metadata, uh, discovery and consumption. So now going to the topic of my presentation today, um, although we are not restricted to that, one of the key challenges we're facing is, of course, we have the ontology mappings, right? So, uh, which is very important. How do you link different entities or concepts from different concept schemes or ontologies or thesauri, uh, which is already covered by SSSOM. So what we are looking into uh, 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 right now is what are the different practices in the different communities uh, to deal with these mappings. Another aspect that we are looking into is when you start dealing with uh, mapping on metadata schema. Um, so it's related to what uh, Nico was saying. I think each challenge, I don't remember the number of the challenge, sorry, but um, which is related to the data model, but we are just focusing on the metadata. We don't want to transform the underlying metadata, the data structure, but we would like at least to make sure that the metadata that describes this data uh, can also leverage mappings. And I will show you a few examples that justifies that. Um, in the Ferris Fair project, uh, at the end of the project, uh, we, we tried in this project to actually provide recommendation on how to make ontologies fair. So we looked at different uh, approaches, including OBO, um, and uh, different other approaches and methodologies. So we try to align them. And one thing we realized throughout the discussions is that in the FAIR principles, it states that you need to describe your data with rich metadata. But nowhere in the paper, it's actually defined what rich means. Uh, so basically what it means is that you can have one field to an infinity of field that would make it rich. Right, there's no threshold. So one of the things we started working on with the different communities is to actually uh, define a minimum metadata schema with which the ontology would be fair. So if you don't provide that minimum content, you're not fair. If you provide that content, you're fair. If you provide more content, more information, thanks a lot, you're more fair or fair. I don't know what is the best in English. And that work was done both at the European level, but also with the contribution with, of the international communities through the Research Data Alliance, uh, because we had a small task group uh, in the Vocabulary and Semantic Service Interest Group of the Research Data Alliance, in which we worked uh, on this. And this work was done in collaboration with Clément Jonquet and Biswana Duta and Luis Bonino and many others. And so from, from that work, we started working on defining the schema, as I showed in my previous slide, aligned with DCAT and using the MOD ontology, that is metadata for ontology description, which aggregates multiple, uh, multiple existing ontologies into one uh, and come up with 127 fields. So the idea was to actually define a minimum metadata profile on DCAT, which will integrate a much smaller number of uh, elements from MOG. So we, met, we organized a workshop. We had, I think, uh, 80 participants. Um, basically, the idea of the workshop is that we went through the model and asked the people that were present to actually vote on the field that would be necessary 
Um, so mandatory, recommended, and optional. And based on these votes, we established a minimum profile that you can find serialized in OWL and Shackle in the GitHub link that is providing at the bottom of the slide. And then the next step was to say, okay, we want to test our model. And for that, what we would like to do is to publish in the fair data point, which is a GCAT store, um, the content of different ontology repositories, right? A portal, agroportal, but also uh, SCOS vocabulary repositories like uh, the NERC vocabulary service, the Australian ARDC service, uh, and the and many other uh, ontology repositories. And in order to do that, well, actually, you have to to provide the mappings, right? Because the the metadata schemas that are provided by the different repositories are heterogeneous, of course, except for BioPortal, AgroPortal, and uh, Industry Portal, which are based on the same technology and usually leverage the same metadata schema. But in this case, you need to actually do the mapping so that you can make the transformation from the initial metadata schema to the GCAT schema uh, representing these data sets. Another project is the Code Meta project, which is part of Fair Impact. Uh, it's related to the Software Heritage project. And basically the idea is to work on metadata for research software. And they are also, I also have been working on mappings uh, between different, um, different metadata schemas. Uh, and in particular, one of their um, use case that they actually mentioned on their webpage is that what they want is to avoid reducing information loss when you start using different services uh, to provide information on research software. And here I'm showing, I'm summarizing the example and if you want to read more, you can go to their website. Um, basically, the idea is that GitHub can be connected to Figshare, which is a, a data repository for publishing, uh, like you would publish a paper, an archive on Figshare. Uh, Figshare provides metadata schema, so does GitHub. So you need already to do the mappings and the correspondence between what you can get from GitHub and uh, <clears throat> align it with what you will provide on Figshare. But then Figshare uh, will uh, provide a DOI uh, for identifying the software. And then you start having another problem because data sites also require some specific metadata associated with the DOI. And so you need to make sure that the Figshare metadata and the data site metadata are aligned. Otherwise, there would be some, some lose, lost, uh, loss of information. So for the mappings, they predefined the metadata model based on schema.org and code meta, specific terms uh, that they start uh, a map or make direct mappings uh, with the different uh, format, like here uh, as an example data site, where basically uh, this representation is in, in simple tabular format. Actually, it's not uh, using the SSSOM format. So that's one of the work that we would like to do with them in Fair Impact is to see if they can test the SESOM format uh, so that they can actually harmonize the representation of their, of their mappings. And so during the last workshop, where my colleagues from, from the Semantic Interoperability Task Force from EOSC, uh, Milan Ostoshek also started listing problems that you have with metadata mapping. And some of them are going to be discussed today. Uh, so you have string, string to string mappings, string to object mappings, uh, object to object mappings, and field to field mappings with the usage of different vocabularies. And that's where you start having troubles. Uh, for instance, string to string, uh, well, you have different ways of uh, concatenating a string, for instance, for a name. You can start with the first name and the last name, the last name and the first name. You can forget an accent. Uh, you can use the first name is just a, 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 a one letter. And there are different ways. So how do you reconcile this? Which deals a little bit with the data content, right? Um, so for that, of course, the solution is the a normalization um, uh, for, for, for these kind of things. Also, you have the problem when you start um, converting um, schema uh, from one to another. For instance, uh, the example here of Dublin core uh, concept of creator and the representation of creator in data sites, where you have creator name, name type, 
given name, family name, name identifier, name identifier scheme, and scheme URI. So you get tons of information on one side, only one field on the other side. Uh, same goes for vocabulary. That's a little bit what was uh, uh, presented by Nico. I think it relates to the concept set uh, problem, where in one case you have only one uh, elements that describe data set, and in another vocabulary you may have 10 different subclasses or 10 different uh, associated concepts. Here again, we went to the data site, which also provides some mappings. Um, and here you see the example I was mentioning, the alignment with Dublin Core, where in the end, you see that uh, the Dublin Core term creator is aligned to uh, two, different, um, two different metadata elements of the data site, uh, metadata schemas. And then you end up having some of the metadata uh, fields of data site that are not presented on Dublin Core. So what do you do with them, right? Uh, how do you link them in some ways? So this was just to actually just introduce the problem we're working on in Fair Impact, or at least one side of the problem. Um, what we are planning to do is to continue organizing workshops. Uh, for on, on different aspects. And for instance, the next workshop is going to be to discuss on the different methodologies for doing mappings. Because in the biomedical community uh, that I know quite well, uh, you already have methodologies in place. Uh, you do that in bio-curation. Uh, that's not the case for many other communities. And uh, at least we don't know uh, if they are common methodology accepted. So one of the ideas that we would like to work on is to provide a sort of cookbook on how to do mappings that would apply to different communities, right? Um, and so we'll also discuss requirements on fair mappings that I didn't really push uh, on today in my presentation. But uh, again, the idea is to make sure that the mappings are in a machine actionable format, which means that you can create uh, clients or services that can actually easily work with them. And finally, one of the uh, things that we discussed with other projects, because we realized that uh, many, many communities are currently facing the same issues and discussing the same issues and mappings. Um, in the last RDA meeting, there were people from material science, uh, from very diverse uh, uh, communities that were actually uh, discussing these issues. So one of the idea that we would like to push to make sure that these discussions are not just done in a European corner, but it can be also uh, discussed with uh, colleagues from US, Australia, and other parts of the world, we would like to create at some point an interest group at RDA. So, um, well, basically, you can join if you're interested in the discussions, and we are interested to hear what you have to say. Um, so you are most welcome to join the discussion, and I will stop here. <laughs>